Did you say hi to the driver? But what we're trying to do is get you to understand that and maybe even draw some of you into working for us one day. Now, a lot of people are visiting out of town and some um, are from this area. But regardless, we have people that come for a week, a weekend, work with us, learn the skills that are not common knowledge anymore. There's not a lot of people in the general population that know how to restore a 1911 steam locomotive, a 1904, much less some of the 1920s cars that we have. So it's something that has to be taught. And you have, really and truly, most people come out and they have no experience whatsoever. Okay, and that's the point. The point is to be able to continue generationally this history that is very vitally important and I want to explain that to you today, and hopefully you'll leave here understanding that a little bit more. We're going to turn our 1911 steam locomotive around in the next few moments with a 1916 turntable. So a 1916 turntable originally built up in Pennsylvania, in Ambridge, Pennsylvania, in fact, by the American Bridge and Iron Company there. It was thus delivered to Macon, Georgia, and used with... The repair shops there, the locomotive repair shops out in the open, uh, not with a roundhouse at that point in time, but later on it was removed a few years later and reinstalled in Cedartown, Georgia, just south of Rome, Georgia, there in Polk County. And there it was in fact involved with a smaller roundhouse and a smaller version of locomotive repair shops for the Central Georgia Railway. This turntable I'm standing on today weighs about 80 tons and it's about 80 feet long so remember the weight 80 tons the 4501 is close to 200 tons so let's go ahead and just round up about 280 tons just as soon as the locomotive pulls onto the table will be present culminating those two weights now think about turning that around by hand because that's exactly what they were having to do when this table was originally built it was non-motorized. Its 25 horsepower motor today allows us to do the same thing. But the fact of the matter is, when this turntable was not motorized, that type of weight, and sometimes lighter, sometimes heavier, was turned by about four crews. So I'll need about four of you just in case. Keep that in the back of your mind, all right? If I can't get volunteers, I'll just start choosing people. Now this type of table is known as the Armstrong table, so if your last name's Armstrong, you're automatically volunteer. Ladies and gentlemen, how in the world would you turn that amount of weight around by hand? Well, you see right here in the center, as I step down to the center, about 40 feet, there is a bearing. It's hidden from you with that rich plate, that metal, but there is a bearing about six feet in diameter and what you have to do with any locomotive to be able to turn it by hand is get the weight of whatever locomotive and the weight that really is balanced over that bearing. Now, even using a motorized table is pretty difficult if we don't get it balanced in a correct fashion. Ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and begin our turntable demonstration this afternoon. Ladies and gentlemen, locomotive 4501 built in 1911 by Baldwin for the Southern Railway. Up in Philadelphia, delivered to the Southern Railway, which first operated not as a passenger locomotive for the Southern, but that as a freight locomotive. Operates around areas in the Bullscap, Tennessee area, the Knoxville Division around the East Tennessee Division of the Southern, and towards the end of its Southern career, not the end of its career, in totality because you see hundreds and thousands of steam locomotives like the 3501 were cut up by the court. 
And occasionally, such as the 01 we have here today, for sale was perhaps because they were sold to short line of small operating railroads. Perhaps that bought them a little time so they could, in fact, be restored. Ladies and gentlemen, locomotive 45 volt is the very first MS282 Mikado out of 182 to go to the Southern, and it's the only one of the back class of the 182 that's left. And again, the right place and points upon the black here, the National Registry of Forest Races. Not often you're going to see that on a mobile locomotive. Or anything that's local, in fact. In fact, you'll be able to see that on historical residences, houses, structures, things of that nature. So that place is for him to understand how important this locomotive is as far as it is concerned. Now, we talked about the two and eight things more under that, and then the Machado. You're not sure about or do the description of the locomotive, you're going to see a remix of numbers. The way you calculate the wheel arrangement is counting wheel set. If that two or more things is looking like, so we'll talk about the front of the foot bottom, we'll start counting those wheel sets all the way back. Instead of two of these counter wheels, that's the two. We'll start counting the four driving wheels, larger, one, two, three, four, four plus four, obviously four on both sides, and two curling wheels underneath the cab with the engineer up there operating and certainly illustrating operating the locomotive this afternoon give it a little more stability with the wheel 282 Mikado is the nickname it received because this plant an American plant in fact is being served by the Japanese railroad order there the assembly of Japan and used there and the Mikado moves in the river which is the also moves down to Michigan as far as yeah, just the locomotive. I mean, it was yeah, being operated in Japan and getting the yeah, yeah, yeah. for a very good reason. We're running the turntable up to track two. And that is an excellent spot. Excellent spot by our veteran crew, and we've lined the turntable up with track two, allowing us this time to take the 4501 off the table. The engineer will take the locomotive all the way off on the track two, pass by your coach up there on track one. Locomotive will go all the way to the other end of East Canada Yard. Once they pass the switch, they'll bring it down to a stop. Back to track one. Back to locomotive. Recouple, and your locomotive will be on the opposite end of your train. Let's give a round of applause for our crew up there in the cab. And as humid and hot as you are, I assure you, you're nowhere near as hot as our crew is up there in the cab for obvious reasons. All right, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to see part two of our East China tour here, I will need you to meet me right down there at the walkway where the ropes and the pylons end. Just be 